there was reports of showing that many of those fragrances uh, have 75% of them are probable carcinogenic substances in there. And then you're exposing yourself and it's, it's under the guise of wanting to smell good. We talk a lot about toxins on this yes. show, especially toxins found in food and drinking water. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's not just the toxins in our diet that we have to worry about. So tell us uh, about what are the common products and even behaviors that are fatal conveniences. Let's oh. start there. Wow, where, where can I start? <laughs> well, you could, you could start with, you know, your personal care. You could start with your home. Like, you know, people seemingly, you wake up, you go to your tap, you get some water, uh, and if you're not filtering it, you have a cacophony of, of chemicals that, um, that come with it. And that's one of our biggest, one of the surprising things that I found in the book was uh, our exposure of PFAS, which is a, basically a grandson of Teflon, uh, was from the waterways, right? So, uh, so then you're seemingly drinking quote unquote clean water and you're exposing yourself to that and a lot of other chemicals. And then you maybe take a shower and you wash yourself and, and, and uh, shampoo and conditioners and, and lotions. So, so in the personal care, just generally speaking, there's things like parabens and phthalates, uh, and they're everywhere all the time. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, just the setup of all of this stuff is strange because we have, you know, 60 to 80,000 chemicals created every year in our world. And of that, they're hidden in all of these products and not, I think, maybe about 1,500 are tested. So, you know, when we're, you know, I find it funny when I was writing this, it was like personal care. And then it's riddled with, and then what are these parabens and phthalates and fragrances, right? These things um, largely fall into these categories of endocrine disruption, uh, immune compromising. Endocrine disrupting, as you know, is, is this kind of hijacking of your glandular systems. And, and it's alarming to then you look at from a population standpoint that all of this continued body burden is leading us to poor motility of sperm. It's uh, leading towards endometriosis. It's leading toward girls going into puberty earlier, menopause challenges. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a strange, invisible world by continuously doing these habits where you go, you know, how, how could I buy a product that's harmful, right? And that's kind of the alarming thing. Like, what do you mean my shampoo? What do you mean my lotion? What do you mean my beauty pro I've been yeah, using this come forever. On. Yeah, I've been using this forever. And, and then you go over time, these things can have a lot of challenges for the body and for the energy and, and, um, and they're mis mysterious because it's, again, it's hard to put your finger on it. People who are supposed to protect us, like um, <laughs> the EPA, just as an example, or yeah. even the FDA, mm -hmm. you know, assure us yeah. that these chemicals, yeah, they might be there. We don't test for all of them. But they might be Certainly there, not. but they're in such infinitesimal amounts yeah. that they couldn't possibly right. be a problem. Right. What say you? That's the science shows the latter, right? So actually, they show Dr. Leo Trisande wrote a great book, uh, "Poor, Sicker, Fatter," and he dedicated his life to EDCs and a bunch of other. Also, they're showing that these things are also affecting epidemiological outlooks as well, but these small things, <laughs> our bodies are working in small degrees all the time. And so when you have a foreign chemical coming into your body, it, it reacts and then you're constantly doing it. The problem is that they're, they're saying this without adequate studies, you know, and, and it's not long-term, nor is it taking into the effect all of this exposure all the time. It never stops. Right, so you're you're getting phthalates from your your 
clothing, you're getting phthalates from your water bottle, you're getting, and <laughs> it's leached into your water, you're getting phthalates from lotion, you're getting, so all of these things build up over time. So the, 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 they may have studied one chemical for one particular aspect, but in reality, what kept showing up in the research is when people actually used it and the way that they were using it was 10, 20, 30 times more exposure to some of this stuff. It's a dangerous thing when there's, you know, you, you know you'll probably find this to be true in all of the stuff that you've done. It's like, let's, let's do this. Let's throw it out there like the Wild West and use this term plausible deniability. So if I don't test it myself, then I don't know if my product's bad. So they sell it anyway. Even though the research says these chemicals are harmful um, or probable carcinogenic activity or PFOS or EDC or whatever it is, uh, that's where it gets, gets really slippery. The bottom line is you, we need testing. We need this testing all the time and we're not, we're not doing it. And uh, we're suffering as a result. And if you look at the very thing that moves the population forward, sperm counts are going down, motility is not effective, um, and this population movement forward of our entire world is being under, underpinned by this kind of uh, chemical romance that we somehow are in. So the big question is also the regulatory bodies, right? Yeah. You know, the frustrating thing of writing this book was like, they would even write an article about, you know, a paraben or a phthalate or something like this or PFAS, and yet it's in the products that they're supposed to be regulating. And I find it funny when, you know, now that there's some pressure out there because they only respond to the pressure, right? So now that PFOS and just after I finished the, the book, there was a Coca-Cola based company called Simply Orange. I believe it was Simply Orange. It was tested independently and there was over 200 PFOS chemicals in that orange juice. And by the way, there was also no real orange juice. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so it comes out that way and then the pressure of PFOS, for example, gets out there and then it goes to the government and the government then issues a toxic substance control act and you're like wait a minute so now you initiated something to do about it but yet you already had a regulatory body that didn't do anything about it so then you're feeling good about yourself having an agency that's now going to do something about it it's it's a strange Thing. And that's where I think people have a hard time getting their head around because they're going to a store like, hey, I want lotion. My skin's dry. Yeah. My, I want to do things. That or I are, want my room to smell good. Yes. Or I, I want that morning fresh smell on my towels yes. when I take them out of the dryer. Yes. and the, cause I, I can't have a morning fresh smell on my towels? Oh, man can't have it. Oh man. And the fact that these things and you know I I devoted a big part of the book to to these different kind of headliners and and one of those is fragrances, right? So yeah. They have these trade secret loopholes where all they are doing is like, "Hey, we want we're going to use this, you know, manufactured musk, but then we're going to use about a, about 100 other chemicals, but it's a trade secret, so we now we don't have to disclose it." And you're like, what? So now it's not on any label. It's not out there for you to decide. And many of those, it was reports of showing that many of those fragrances uh, have 75% of them are probable carcinogenic substances in there. And then you're exposing yourself and it's, it's under the guise of wanting to smell good. And so a mom who wants everything good for, for her, her home, her children, you wouldn't knowingly want to expose yourself and people to probable carcinogenic compounds. But that's what's showing up in all of these weird fragrances and products. And that's, that's where it's really frustrating because I, I didn't want to have to write a book. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to have to write a book about this. I, had, I was compelled to because it's a growing... You've been doing this 
all the time too. And you're like, wait a minute. Well, why is this happening? My father, I dedicate this book to my father. He was suffering with chemical sensitivity in the 90s. Mm. That was my first education on yeah. what's happening. So it's in my heart to do it. And I'm like, okay, well, you can eat. You can try and live he- healthy and happy and you can eat and, and take care of yourself. And But then the chemicals that are being put in our products, uh, not regulated, not tested, um, very, very, very little. Um, it's just a... It just doesn't make sense to the moral code that I believe we should be uh, living in. Um, and so people with their hard-earned money are buying products that are causing them undue harm. And it's over time, right? It's, it's, it's not acute. So I'm not saying that you put a lotion on and you die tomorrow. It's not how this works. It's just this, this hijacking happens over time. You know, because like parabens and phthalates, they have half-lives of a few hours in the body. The body deals with it. Obviously, it's still being affected. It's affecting your, your endocrine system. But it gets it out of the body. But then you have things like the forever chemicals, like the PFOSs and the PFOAs. And, and those things bioaccumulate. And we know this. And we keep doing it. 1972. We used to spray our crops with DDT. Sure. What's in our blood today? We still have DDT. So this experiment is not a good experiment to do. Like so, we have PFOS everywhere. You know the non-wrinkly shirt or the the wicking ability of that carpet that you don't want stains to sit in. Those things and so many more are. Are, are these chemicals, are these PFOS chemicals. They market us as these conveniences, but they don't really tell us what we're being exposed to. And, you know, that's just not something I'm cool with, and I, I saw my dad suffer as a result of it. So, and I see it, and it's growing every day, you know, with these, this chemical soup that we keep creating and not talking about. I've written in previous books, so, I mean, there's very interesting studies that women who eat a lot of chicken during pregnancy Mm. uh, give birth to to little boys who have smaller penises. And it's because of the phthalates uh, in not only the chicken, but also in the plastic wrap. And believe it or not, when I was growing up, there weren't any plastic wraps uh, of, you know, you had a butcher shop, you yeah. had butcher paper. And, yep. Yep. Um, I did a recent experiment, I've done it before, but I took a couple of bags of organic pre-chopped lettuce that mm. I bought at the supermarket and left them in the refrigerator. And three weeks later, they looked as pristine as the day I bought them. Mm. And you can't tell me that some self-respecting bug wouldn't have wanted to eat that right. in three weeks' time. Right. And yet they were preserved. Yeah. And, yeah. and they don't have to tell you what's in that bag. Totally. There's no requirement. Totally. It's organic, but we don't have to tell you what's on the bag. What's on the, ra- and what's that, on the surface. Exactly. And that's really scary to me because, you know, the, the contact of our food and our drinks... Yeah, that's undermining a lot of things. And, you know, when you start looking at like, you know, clearly you and I aren't eating fast food and stuff, but any takeaway, anything that is better heat resistant and the food doesn't stick to it, all of that stuff is dangerous chemicals. I had a good friend of mine who started a business. He was in, uh, uh, he worked in the computer business and he was in uh, for Intel and he was, the circuits were so small and intricate that when he was working, working on it, they had to test every off gas. And so he was working high, high level. And then he got food delivered to him. And then all of a sudden it clicked. He goes, that food is wrapped in plastic. My circuits are wrapped in plastic. All of this stuff. So he tested in their lab, he tested the food. From that, he ended up starting one of the largest alternatives to single-use plastic companies on the planet, working with ConAgra, McDonald's, Walmart, today, hmm. right? His name's Troy Swope. 
amazing guy. But that's, so it takes that. It's not a regulation body, right? It's, it's us. Right. It's us as people who care for other people. We come together and we make these changes. And, th- and that's where like, it, it horrifies me, right? When you see especially hot or warm food next to plastic, plastic. or like it's, it's, it's a prescription for disaster. And people to understand just the, you know, it's petroleum, it's oil, right? And it takes thousands of chemicals to make it into that very convenient container, right? Uh, and, and we're running around kind of not expecting or not perceiving that this is a bad thing. Um, so we have to raise that alarm and we have to raise the alarm. And where my optimism is, is the people listening, the people on your audience. They're, they're obviously tuning in because they want to learn so they, they can be healthy, so they can be aware. That's what this is about. We have 8 billion of us, right? That's the numbers. So if we wake up and, and we become aware of this stuff, that we don't have to consume 200 grams a year of plastic. That's the, the, the studies. 200 grams a year we're consuming of plastic as it relates to the microplastics in our water, the microplastics in our food, the microplastics in our drinks. And all of those are petroleums and endocrine disrupting and probable carcinogenic activity and, and obesogens. Oh, yeah. So these terms where obesogens going, oh, wow, this is now metabolically absolutely changing the game. And so now you have people frustrated, not losing weight, all of this stuff. Hey, I'm eating perfectly. But then they're going and they're putting this stuff on and they're doing their laundry and they're putting nylon and, and, and everything Spandex on their and and all. Oh my God, right? And so, and that's your skin right? Transdermal, and there's very clear studies, special genitalia, there's very clear studies that's showing that you are receiving those chemicals, especially those sensitive areas, and children mm-hmm. with things like throwaway diapers, horrible, right? And I get it. Again, you're saying it's price. It's a convenience. It's convenience, but you know, buy a bunch of organic diapers and then just wash them then you don't have to buy anything else again. But don't put the fragrance. But don't put the fragrance. You gotta buy the right, exactly. So, but it's this whack-a-mole, right? It's right. like, but, but you know, so it's like, I wish we weren't here, but we are here. We all were born into some level of the industrial revolution where we made all these conveniences. Hell, when I go to my faucet, I've been all over the world I've been in crazy situations. I've seen some of the people that didn't have clean water, that don't even, I I met people that have never, that never saw clear water. So imagine that, right? And so when I go to my faucet, it's not lost on me, this is a miracle that we have plumbing and we have water. However, those systems of, of filter basically the waste treatment plants or the or the the water treatment plants basically are keeping us from you know typhoid yeah, cholera that, yeah, and dysentery exactly. yeah. right That's but they exactly don't they're, right. but they're not the, the they're not sophisticated which good enough. for them good for, yeah good for them <laughs> cuz acutely you would die right. right exactly but these things we're not they're doing just as as much as they need to do but we're not you know we're not getting the full cleaning gamut of, of, of what we need for this stuff. So that's where, you know, we need to kind of push back and, and be aware of this stuff. And I'm not, I'm also not about taking conveniences away. It's all, you know, doom and gloom. And <laughs> uh, we're sitting here saying, you know, we need the nanny state to yeah. make all this not happen to us. Yeah. But that's not going to happen. Right. Uh, so what is what do our listeners do about yeah. all this? Uh, and you've got a lot of really good recommendations. So yes. kind of have at it. Help us out here. Yeah, yeah. So the last fourth of the book is solutions. Even a lot of DIY stuff, a lot of products that are doing a lot of great things. Um, and I think of it like this. I think of, you know, because there's a lot. So I think of 
go from in to out. So the most vulnerable is you open your mouth and you're drinking and you're eating. So what are, what are you doing there, right? Yeah, don't eat the food that has been wrapped and everything. And of course, ultra processed food is barely food anymore and it's chemicalized. So that's a no brainer. And then, you know, one of the first things I think everyone should run out and do, if they don't have their own natural spring that's tested, obviously that's the golden <laughs> standard, um, filter your water. But filter is not just filter, right? I would, I kind of think of water as like break it down, deconstruct it because it's, it's, it's all, it's virtually all contaminated with something. Right. An RO system, reverse osmosis right. or distillation, and then add some electrolytes back into it. That's, that's the bare minimum. And, it, and you also save on plastics and buying all this other stuff. That is the thing. And we need to stay hydrated. So start there. A few hundred bucks. Now you have your own water system. And then, then look at your food. Like obviously the less takeout, the less ultra process. So, so start whole food. And, you know, if you, you know, can't afford organic or farmer's market stuff, there's the dirty dozen, the conventional ones that are, uh, you know, that little sticker on the fruits and vegetables, if it has nine, if it's not labeled saying organic, you can look and say, if it's, if it's nine, it's organic. If it's four or three, then you're seeing that it's sprayed with chemicals and or could be a genetically modified fruit. So if you can't afford it, you need to wash. Think of it in terms of common sense. An apple, romaine lettuce, celery, nectarines, things that you're going to be eating directly. You're not peeling like a banana or something. So those you want to wash, right? I use baking soda and hydrogen peroxide, let it soak. You can use oxygen bubblers to clean all of that stuff. So clean, clean your food if you can't, and also organic too, you just clean your food. So that, that's where I would start. And then as you kind of expand from there, what are you, what are your daily habits that you're doing? What are you washing your body with? What are you slathering on your skin? And, and women, unfortunately, the beauty products are riddled. Some of the worst. Yeah, riddled with this stuff. And you're doing it constantly. That mas mascara that doesn't wipe off, PFAS again. The, that, lip, that lipstick that doesn't wipe off, PFAS again. That concealer, PFAS again. So it's like you're chemicalizing all this stuff and then Obviously, that's not good for your skin either, right? And we, you know, we're trying to, you know. Well, it's the old, the old story of the of the lip balms and lip moisturizers. Exactly. They actually yeah, exactly. dry it out, exactly. and so you have to put more on, and you exactly. they literally become addicted exactly. to the product you originally started yeah. to moisturize exactly. you know, your lips with. You you interrupt to that sebum, that natural mm -hmm. lubrication that the skin has, and you interrupt that whole process. Not to mention whatever chemical you've just kind of dry, usually dried it out, like you said, and then you become dependent on it. And it takes a little bit to break that cycle, you know, just stop using that stuff. Think of, I think of things like if you're going to use, you know, if you're in a dry area or whatever, and you're, you know, listen, you got to look at hydration and everything else, but, you know, think of it as nutrition, right? So coconut oil, shea butter, uh, even olive oh. Oil. Olive oil is great. You know, yeah. it's like a, there's a lot of you got a great olive oil too. Yeah, thank you. you. Yeah, it's like yummy. I mean, if it was good enough for Sophia Loren, uh, come it's on, good, it's good enough for me come to put on. on my skin. Come on, <laughs> and you feel it. Oh, you yeah. feel it. You feel the difference. You feel it's it's natural. Like like everyone likes to smell good too. So essential oils, man. There's a infinite better better result. Like again, like this whole thing is set up from my perspective, divorcing nature. If we go just like that, oh my God, I bought into the idea I need a moisturizer on my lips. Now you just came in there and, and shut yourself off or, or disrupted the natural rhythm of your, of your little microsystem of your lips. All of this stuff 
if you if you divorce yourself from all of those things and chemicalize your yourself from, especially from a personal care standpoint then you're a victim to that now side effect but if you look at this stuff of like oh what can i literally get a benefit of from a moisturizer standpoint but also as a nutritional side um, then it becomes a whole other thing right lavender incredible yeah. healing agent as well as smelling smelling good so yeah you can still you can still smell good but also it's also parasympathetically dominant for your body so it helps to pull pull you down in this yeah, yeah. yeah calm you down yeah. and so uh, we, so it's 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 going back to that common sense, and I think ultimately through the book, I just want to wake people up to we're all into patterns, mm-hmm. we're all into habits, and we're just ingrained in them. And it takes a little bit to go, oh, I had no idea that that convenient little slippery dental floss. I didn't realize it had chemicals of PFAS in it connected to kidney cancer. Well, I certainly don't want to use it now. But it's convenient, right? yeah. And until you disrupt that, so this book can can be startling, right? It can be overwhelming, yeah. But the point is just making one step, one step at a time, you know. How about one of my my favorite subjects, sunscreen? <laughs> oh, wait a minute! Don't I have to protect oh. myself from the sun? You got to use your common sense, right? <laughs> You need, I mean, you need the sun. We love the sun. Just don't understand where your own melanin levels are at, how white you are, how dark you are, and respect that. So a few minutes a day, full exposure. And then if you're going to go more, then just use a natural, uh, I mean, coconut oil is between 5 and 7% natural SPF, right? And, you know... Yeah, so we have to, and the, and the chemical soup and, and sunscreens are, are scary. Oh, I absolutely agree. Very and scary. The, the sad thing is, these chemicals, skin absorbs things. Yeah. And these chemicals are absorbed yeah. uh, directly. Yeah. And they're all endocrine disruptors. Yeah. And I just, it scares me to death. I see pictures from the... Um, dermatology literature of pregnant women smearing oh. sunscreen oh. on their belly oh. uh, you know to to protect their child and I'm going oh my gosh you know they're sending you know hormonal single uh, signals to this developing brain yeah. uh, and it's like oh my gosh yeah. do you have any idea what you might be doing totally to yeah. your child yeah oxybenzoines oh, and yeah. all of these things uh, the and you're also thwarting the vitamin D, right? Exactly. So, so like people, especially like, okay, don't be afraid so much. Respect your situation and don't burn. Like burning's never good. Like that's yeah, a that's common right. sense. bad idea. So, so yeah, we're not saying go out in the sun and just stay there. Like just don't burn your skin. That's damaging. But um, build up that melanin. Build up that, that solar, those solar panels. Because it's it's so gifting, and stay away from especially the the aerosolized sunscreens, uh, all of those uh, the benzenes, the dioxins, all of that stuff in those. That that's horrifying. The the connections to cancer. But aren't those all illegal? I mean, don't we control that now? I know you are going to tell me no. I don't understand how it's possible that virtually every one of these things is is not regulated it's you know how many swear words are in that book out loud that i'm staring at research and i knew a little bit about it but as you know when you're digging and you're going they know it's probable carcinogenic activity they know it and then moms and everyone and they're just like because they're going like, well, if I can buy it, it's probably safe. And I'm definitely afraid of the sun. So I need to get my banana boat or whatever the hell. Sunscreen. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's a weird flip that we have evolved with the sun. And, uh, and you know, there's, there's connections to 
you know, the carcinogenic activity of the actual lotions themselves. Yeah. Not the skin or not the sun, right? So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. You know, uh, I, I grew up in the 50s and 60s and uh, my, there wasn't any sunscreen back then. <laughs> and my parents, particularly my mother, would literally kind of set a timer uh, during oh, wow. the, the start of season. And you know, okay, you're, you know, you're going out for 30 minutes yep. and you're done. Yep. And you're coming back in and you're gonna read a book. And yeah. we progressed. And so, yeah. you know, by the end of the summer, we were brown little berries, but brilliant woman, thinking back, but they knew that yeah. you had to develop a, a callus, yeah. if you will, yeah. a melanin callus. Yeah. And we never got burned because no. my mother was, you know, we thought she was, you know, a till of the hunt. Uh, oh, we're playing, right, we're having right, such right. a good time in the water. You know, no. And, it's time to but, come out. Come on out. Yeah. You're out. Sorry. 100%. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. But you see, sunscreen is a convenience because, yeah. you know, I can go out, you know, all day. Yeah. I don't wear sunscreen. I actually, and I write about this, I eat my sunscreen. <laughs> right. Um, you exactly. know, I eat all these polyphenols, vitamin exactly. C, and um, yeah, I just spent you know, a couple of weeks in Europe hiking 12 miles a day um, in a short sleeve shirt. I did have a hat on, yeah. but I didn't wear any sunscreen. Yeah, yeah. And I've got a nice tan, but I never burned. Yeah. 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 So again, that's common sense. That stuff yeah. scares me. I mean, really, sunscreen scares me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm trying to scare my viewers. Again, this is, um, it's the flip of the script of the fear overshadowing our common sense of like your mother, right? So our population now is just like running around afraid of the sun and they would rather put on in a virtually unregulated chemical on their skin. Is it? Big companies <laughs> that that drive this. I mean, why why aren't we being told these things? Why aren't there regulations? And you talk about this. I mean, I, I leave a lot of things to question in this book, but but the obvious answer is we've somehow put profits and power over our own health. And, um, you know, you look at this Mayo Clinic study where it showed through moderate lifestyle and diet that only 2%, 2.7% of Americans were deemed healthy. And you're like, if we're trying to harm ourselves and be dependent on, on, these, on, on these things and be dependent on the pharmaceutical industry or the chemicalized romance in these products, then, then we've done a great job, right? So that's the only conclusion I can make is that we have allowed for profits to be more powerful, you know, lobbying and all of this stuff to be more powerful than our own health. And I don't know how the hell we have gotten there. And, you know, that's part of why I, you know, I thought my dad was nuts. My dad was a tenured professor, double masters, highly functional guy, uh, cared about people. And then he comes to me and says, I can't function. I am zoned out. So he gets all his colleagues and doctors and they finally realize, like, your exposure to fragrances of a variety of, from shampoos, conditioners, all that stuff is, is causing a neurological shutdown. And so that's shocking when I'm in my 20s in school, in college going, what, what are you talking, it's invisible. And you know the crazy thing, Dr. Gundry, is I was down so many rabbit holes and trying to, as you know, when you do a book, each chapter, you're amassing a huge amount of information to then get your head around it so that you can make it accessible. 
Right. Right. And you have to also stop at certain areas going, if I say this, then I have I don't have enough space to <laughs> finish. <laughs> and your editor go, no, we're not here. We can't do yeah. that. Right. So when I'm staring at this stuff and my dad was that first person that when he, you know, he was an educator and it was before the Internet. So he's like giving me VHS tapes. Look at this. And here's the report. And he's highlighted already. And I'm looking at it going, how is this possible? And it took me a while. And then 30 years along the way, researchers and buddies that I meet going, eh, you should look at this. Uh, the cell phone is showing some incredible, uh, almost infertility responses, gyloma and cancer. And I, of course, I thought that was crazy too, initially. Mm -hmm. And everything in here, the pre people, if you're not aware of it, it's shocking to go, how is this freaking possible that we could knowingly sell products to ourselves, i.e. companies to us, that are harmful? I don't have a good answer. Here's what I know. We have to face it honestly. You and I and your listeners, we have to know about it. If we don't know about it, we can't do anything about it. And then we are a victim to other people's crazy ideas. The crazy idea that the FDA looks the other way, the EPA looks the other way, the FCC doesn't do a good enough job. Again, there's great people. I've met great people in these organizations trying to do the right thing. But what I'm staring at is very pragmatic. That paraben, that phthalate, that B8, BPH, that BPA, that's in this product. That propylene glycol flow agent, whatever it is, this dioxin, this 1,4 dioxin from this chemical reaction of this product that's never on the label, that's in there. This is in there. I'm not making it up. The research is there. 200 different research articles, there could have been 1,000, 25 researchers my own fact checkers, trying to do some sort of understanding of how the hell we got here, but it's here. Now that it's here, what do we do about it, right? right. So you go back into solutions. You go back into, like, this, this is just, I use this example. If you are in a business relationship or relationship and someone did something and you don't say anything about it, then nothing changes except building up of resentments or fear or paranoia. But as soon as you turn to someone and say, hey man, I, you know, this happened or that happened, it made me upset, let's talk about it, then you can resolve it. It's facing things and looking at things honestly. You've been doing that all your entire career, throwing out books of people like, what the what? hell? <laughs> right? In order to change, we have to be aware of this stuff. I saw my dad suffer, my first teacher of my life, suffer, and he shouldn't be suffering. But he was, because there's real chemicals affecting. Now listen, not everyone is feeling the effect. That's right? my next question. How do you know? Your dad was, was you know, a canary in a coal mine. Yeah. And I have lots of canaries that end up yeah. with me. Yeah. And they, you know, they, are super sensitive. Yep. Um, most of us are never going to feel these things, at right. least initially. At least initially. Because we don't feel this, yeah. come on, what's the big right. deal, right? right? Well, it's, you know. My towel smells springtime fresh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want my springtime fresh towels. No, yeah, exactly. no I don't. Right, um, not in that way. Just hang them outside yeah, in the springtime. Yeah. That, you know, what an idea. Right. Actually, it's the best. When I hang my laundry outside, there's, the nature does an amazing job. Um, you know, I look at, I couldn't help but to look back at the, the tobacco industry. 40 plus years they played this game. Yes, it needs more testing kick that down the road. They never admitted anything, plausible deniabilities, yeah. all of this stuff, nothing wrong with tobacco, does, can't prove anything. And they just kept kicking it down the road. I look at that stuff with the Teflon derivatives, with other forever chemicals, with 
even the electromagnetic fields, the telecommunications company, the rabbit holes I went down with that. They hell, they knew back when they when they put up the first telegraph, the electromagnetic fields coming off any electronic device disrupts has a potential of disrupting bees and and migratory patterns of birds. They were noting all of this stuff back in the early 19th century, right? Yeah. So as it continued, we're like, in this instance, the these invisible things, you can't put your finger on it, but we are biological and chemical and we're moving through time and space. And these are affecting us. And it is showing up in the data. It is showing up, again, the problems using the tobacco industry too, is like, if you're around, if you're even smoking or around a secondhand smoker, you're not dying tomorrow. You don't have cancer tomorrow. But if you're around it all the time, this is where the alarm bells have to be raised. This is why you're doing what you're doing. I'm doing what I'm doing so that we can have this conversation so that the population of people can be aware and make other choices and, and, and first affect themselves and their families to have a healthier home, healthier clothes, healthier personal care stuff. And once in the power of integrating, because you know, I'm sure you've ran into this where if you talk to people and you say, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. And unless they're coming to you and they're <laughs> really not good. But, but for the most part, if you grab someone off the street, they're like, yeah, I'm pretty good. But if they do something, maybe eat a little better, or take better care of themselves, and they do a program or something. We've all taken people through programs yeah. of eating better. When they get to that, and they, they go, oh my God, I have so much energy. I've never felt so good. But they, they could not know that. No, that's true. Until they actually did it. So when you start to integrate these things, when you start to align now what you know, what you're discovering into what you want and what's better for you innately, you know this. Why would you want to be knowingly exposed to chemicals that are probable carcinogenic and also endocrine disrupting? So like start moving yourself because you will create the scenario where you have a better chance of feeling better than ever as you move towards this thing. So that's where it's, it's that nebulous invisible and we have to make it visible by the knowledge and by the understanding so that we can then make a better choice. Yeah, it's funny, uh, er early on when I taught people to eat and you know, took away a lot of foods that they thought were good <laughs> for them and you know, they'd come back, you know, I'd say, you know, you know how are you doing? And, people would say, you know, feeling well never tasted so good. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, that's a great way to describe totally. it. Yeah. And that momentum. Oh, yeah. Right? And then gets momentum. Right. And then they'd kind of fall off a little bit and they go, holy cow, I don't like feeling this way. Right. Holy cow. Right. That's how I, I thought that was normal. Yes. Right? It changed the set point. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, I don't like that. I'm, exactly. I'm, Okay, you know, I'm going to behave. <laughs> exactly. Listen, we're so amazing as humans. You can shovel almost anything in your mouth. You can oh, yeah. slather yourself with a lot of stuff and just keep moving forward. And that's the, it's the plus and the minus of being human, especially since we're just creating all this stuff that's not so good for us. But it takes a little bit for that to really feel the impact. Right. But I, I love the momentum side of things. I love when you're like, hey, just try this one thing. I mean, this book is like you can kind of open up to anything and learn something and go, wow, I had no idea. Let's maybe change something. Just these plastic bags for veg for salads. Yeah. I said, look, you know, buy a whole head of lettuce, yeah. organic lettuce. Yeah. Take it home, uh, you know, clean it off, get a salad spinner. Yeah. I've got two. Yeah. And yeah. Throw it in there and get your frustrations out with the salad spinner. <laughs> I've got fun. I've got one of them that's, that's a pull one and another one that's a pound. And it's like, come on, and you know, watch it spin. Yeah. And it literally takes you what thirty seconds more than opening up the bag that's yeah. full of 
plastic yeah. that's being imprinted totally. on your healthy organic lettuce totally. that doesn't have to be declared what it's doing to you. That's at all. At all. At all. And it, without a doubt, is going into your food. Oh, yeah. The data is very clear. I'll give you an example that I, you know, I just wrapped up my, my new book. And uh, oats are, are so bad for you in so many ways, but oats, almost all oats in the United States have been sprayed with Roundup glyphosate. And uh, even some of the organic oats have mm. plenty of glyphosate. Mm. And I was wanting, going down a rabbit hole and there is a herbicide that's used on oats. Oats, long stalk, the oats are up on top of the right, stalk. The right. stalk gets too long, it breaks, and that ruins that oat harvest. Mm. And so in most countries, there's an herbicide that's used to make the oat stalk not grow so high <laughs> so that it doesn't break. Now, the EPA has a law that says it's illegal to use that herbicide in this country on oats. It's a carcinogen. A proven carcinogen, and I won't mention the name. Uh, you'll have to get the new book. Uh, it was illegal during a previous administration, and you can guess what. The EPA was told to loosen that regulation mm. because it was bad for business. And that, yes, it's still really bad for you, but loosen up on what you'll accept parts per million right. on oats. So the Environmental Working Group just sent off a bunch of oat samples from healthy oat cereals. Most of them are household names, yeah. like old-fashioned oats maybe. <laughs> right. And there's up to 400 times the legal wow. safe parts per million wow. on these products since that little tweak Wow. of what the EPA would allow. So that's a perfect fatal convenience. You think you're eating yeah. healthy oats. Healthy oats. And you're getting chemicalized. Yeah. Wow. And I went, oh my gosh. See what I mean? Yeah. It's like you look at this stuff, you really look at it, and I'm grateful for you for doing that, because it's like you really look at it, and the EWG is doing great stuff. Yeah, they're they are. Doing, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really, they're doing great. I don't, they, they should be known more than, than what they are, but. Yeah, but they're troublemakers. Yeah. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the industry probably doesn't like them all that much. But also they highlight ones that are doing good too, so. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's, but that's, that's the yeah, good you know, for I, business, not good for health. Yeah, you know? no, a, f a few years ago, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, Michael Mondavi, uh, Robert Mondavi's son who mm. runs Mondavi Wineries. And uh, we were talking, and he said, you know, it actually took us 10 years to wean ourselves off of chemicals in our vineyards. <sighs> 10 years. Right. He said, we were so addicted to, you know. To using, growing that way. Yeah, to yeah. growing that way. Yeah. And we had to, you know, just kind of basically relearn, re. Yeah. And it's funny, once people, well, let's use the wine industry just as an example. Once they change over to organic or biodynamic, they, their yields actually go up. Absolutely. And absolutely, the quality yeah. goes up. Yeah. And it's like, but you're right. It's like the convenience yeah. of using these things yeah. has fatal consequences. Yeah, and it's, uh, that's a perfect example. You talk about regenerative ag, you talk yeah. about, again, you're, yeah. you're divorcing nature. You're like, okay, we're gonna monocrop. You know, our country <laughs> was founded by most of us were farmers, right? Yeah. And now, and now, you know, the monocropped world of two percent of the people are growing the food for all of us yeah. in this in this way. So, it's like we 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 left that, and then some sort of bright idea of I don't understand how that that was part of the. The, the deal, but... Um, well, I always think back to the movie The Graduate with Dustin oh, Hoffman. Yeah. Yeah. And the most famous line, I think, in the whole movie, other than, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me, but <laughs> pulling young Dustin Hoffman aside, and he says, I have one word for you, plastics. Mm. And, oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Plastics are really good at their job. 
And that's what makes it very difficult, right? Yeah. It makes it that it's very good at the job, even in the food industry, in the supplement industry. The, the oxygen barriers, the resistance to mold, all of that stuff. So it takes, you know, we've become lazy. All these fatal conveniences are just lazy, right? So your, your, your friend of the winery, they have to now get back to what farming actually is, how to actually build up the biomass. And that's the crazy thing, like 1% increase of biomass allows for, and you go with nature, 1% 1, 1 of biomass increase increases the retention of an extra 20,000 gallons of water per acre. Like, instead of like running Run off, off, right? And so it's like, yeah, man, we, uh, we have an opportunity here to continue to. Is there any, I mean, we talk about a lot of tricks that people can do. Yeah. It's not hopeless? No, not at all. People say, well, okay, I can start making a difference in my life, but all those other people aren't gonna do that. So in the end, I'm just going to throw up my hands and say it's not worth it. Uh, what say you? It's an individual choice. I think you have to start with yourself first, and you have to start with your family, and you start with your kids and your your pets and things like that. And 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 that and that's where like I, I didn't even write this book to try to convince anybody of anything. Like I'm just telling you information. It's up to you. And so if you don't want to apply this. You know, we all know what happens when people decide that they're right. <laughs> then that's what they get to end with, <laughs> that they're right. And they don't have the opportunity of that same example that you just said. If you are willing to try something different that you know, because I know most of this stuff is going to be intuitive. As soon as people hear it, they're going to be like, oh, wow, I had no idea. You know how many times I've heard that? I had no idea that that had chemicals on it. I had no idea. Oh my God, I've been doing it all my life. Now, I have an opportunity of change. And when you make that change, you get to integrate more. And when you integrate more, that power of understanding what you're doing, why you're doing it, is a snowball effect. And ultimately, under all of this stuff, I just want people to live the most amazing life ever. And I don't want them to be undercut by the products out there that don't have their best interest. This has been great. Um, speaking of not being undercut, is there a new season of Down to Earth that <laughs> we should be looking forward to? It's a good question. Down to Earth is having a hard time, some internal stuff. So we may not do a third season. Third However, season. I'm doing a whole new TV show with a, I can't really announce the, the new co-host. But we're well down the road of, of doing a, a new show. So Great. super excited about it. And as you know, I'm a huge fan of Baruka nuts. And I understand that you ate all of the oh, Baruka man, nuts I'm you were so bringing sorry. to me. Shame on you. Uh, but <laughs> I just I, didn't plan it. I understand that you are alive and well uh, with Baruka nuts. Yes. And those of you who don't know what we're talking about, you can watch our previous episode all about Oof. Darren and his Baruka nuts. Best nuts uh, ever. Best things ever. And uh, we've actually, we're working on a product that will we'll use some uh, Baruka nuts. Uh, Stay tuned. It's not ready yet, but we're working on it. We're working on it. All right. Well, listen, great to see you. Great Keep to see you, Keep up the man. good work. Pleasure. Yeah, you too. Scary stuff, but be very scared. Um, <laughs> I've spent the last 15 years of writing trying to scare everybody about this. And you know, welcome to the crowd. It is scary stuff. Yeah. The stuff we don't know. Yeah, and we need to change it. Yeah, and yeah. It, I, I agree with you. It is changeable, but yeah. it's gonna it's gonna have to come from us. Yeah. It's not gonna come from people looking out for our welfare. No, and that people have to also own that of their own health and their life. Yeah. And that's the ownership. No one is gonna take that ownership. Like, you know, like I say, this is the only house I'm ever gonna live in. Sorry. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even Harry Houdini didn't come back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm really disappointed. Man. But yeah, man, man. But this is the only one we got. That's and right. if, and if right. we put the care yeah. into this house yeah. and the possessions we have that we do with everything else, wow, 
and you're you're going to help people with this. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate these conversations and for people to become aware of things that they didn't know about, because then that's power. Yeah. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Aluminum in itself is toxic to our brain. Aluminum foil, get rid of it. Uh, you should never line a baking pan with aluminum foil.